Hi, welcome, welcome back. My name is Carson. This is my space where I chat about knitting. Today I have a special little video for you. I'm talking about spring knitting plans, uh, knitting aspirations, inspirations as well. Just things that I would like to knit. I have the intentions of knitting. That's it. I might not, I probably won't realistically get all these on my needles this season, but I think it's a fun thing to do to plan out your knits and look at all the inspiration around you. And I have been down the Ravelry rabbit hole recently looking at spring stuff. And so I thought, what what better video to do than this? Because I found a bunch of stash yarn that I planned all this with. So I can actually show y'all the yarn I want to use for these projects and just talk about the projects a little bit. So yeah, let's just get into it. I don't know where y'all live, but I live in Texas, <laughs> on the coast of Texas. It is hot here pretty much all year round mostly. We do have some like winter spells, but it's more like one day you'll wake up, it'll be 90 degrees outside, and the next day you wake up and it's 30. And then by 5 p.m. in the afternoon, it's already back to 90 degrees. It's very strange weather, but it has been a little bit chillier here recently and the sun hit finally. It's been really rainy too. So just, you know, the feeling of that is it vitamin D? <laughs> uh, just like the vitamin D hitting your skin. Like that just feels so nice to me. And so yeah, the flowers are blooming here now. Like the little wildflowers. It's full wildflower season here in Texas. We have Indian paintbrushes. We have, I don't know if it's lupin or lupine, but uh, blue bonnets, the state flower of Texas, which are so pretty. Daisies, we have all sorts of flowers all around us on the sides of the roads, in the country, in parks you know there's all sorts of flowers and i'm someone who thrives off of wildflowers that's just it's one of my one of my favorite things to go just look at wildflowers or you know pick some on the side of the road put them in a vase like it's just so nice so i have been getting lots of inspiration from flowers like flowery colors yeah just colors you know <laughs> so that's kind of what i think of whenever i think of spring for me personally the warm weather the sun but it's like not too hot to where you can still have fun outside <laughs> at least where I'm from. Flowers, wildflowers. So yeah, you'll see. I have some colors in this little stash and I'm excited about it because I barely ever knit with colors. I'll knit with like pinks, which I mean, there are some pinks in here because you know, your girl likes neutrals and dustier colors. So yeah, all that to say, that's what I think of whenever I think of spring. So that's kind of where I'm headed. That's what I'm incorporating into all the springy projects. So let me tell you all about the first one that I'm really excited for. Really excited for. So all this yarn is in stash. I did acquire this yarn though for this pattern just because I kind of came upon it and I couldn't resist it, you know? It was um it was on sale. It's part cotton, part acrylic. So, anyways, let me just show y'all if I can fish it out of my huge little basket. My huge little basket. <laughs> so, I spied this Karen Blossom Cake at Michael's, at my local Michael's. And you can see it has all these pretty colors in it. It reminds me of a seashell or a sandy beach. <laughs> it has pinks, some browns. It's just like a variegation of all those colors. Maybe it's more of a tonal, I don't know. They just kind of fade in and out. And so I saw this at my local Michael's and I passed it up the first time y'all. I passed it up because I thought, no, you girls on a budget. We ain't getting this yarn. We don't need more yarn. We ain't, do not need more yarn. And then I've really been eyeing the pattern. It's called, I will show pictures up here of all the patterns I'm talking about and I will link everything in the description below as well. But this one's called An Eye for an Eyelet by Kara or Kara Ng. Hope that's how you say her name. Um, and it's... It's actually a crazy knit for me because I swore off all bulky Aran Waite knits a while ago, but I'm realizing there's some that I still want to knit. And this one is Aran Waite. So this is Aran Waite. It's kind of a blown yarn. I want to say it's it's 61% cotton, 39% acrylic. And it's just really pretty. It almost reminds me of uh, Wool in the Gang feeling good in a way. It's not quite as... Uh, that one has lots of fibers to me that almost like mohair they kind of come off a little bit this one i guess because it's cotton and acrylic it's more put together i'm excited about this so yeah this pattern though isn't it at a looser gauge and it has eyelets so it's very airy and i think it'll be a really good sweater for spring because 
it's already hot here and my pits could use some air <laughs> my pits uh you know the ladies <laughs> the chesticles they all could use some air so yeah i'm excited about this and i think it would be a really good one because we do live near the coast i might have said that already but we do go to the beach sometimes and so it does get pretty breezy at night so if we could just you know happen to be on the beach at night which i'm not sure that we would ever would but this would be a great sweater for that so continuing with my story and i got off track <laughs> i passed this up in the store but then i saw that pattern and i thought this would be the perfect yarn for it so i ended up getting it online and it was on sale online so i just went to my store and picked it up and it was a great time and i have two of these there is blah, 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 blah. let's see 227 grams 481 yards so yeah I have two so i think that'll be enough i think it definitely will be cropped i'll probably knit the yolk the sleeves is it yolk like egg yolk or yolk i feel like i've been saying egg yolk <laughs> i'll knit the yolk first and then the sleeves and then the body however long i can knit it before i run out so i'm excited i want to knit up a air and weight pattern which i haven't done forever on like a loose gauge it should go pretty fast I think this is the next thing I'm the most excited to cast on after I get something. I'm sure after I finish my Corin cardigan or Corian, because that's testament. I need to get that one off the needles very soon. So I think this will be my next cast on and I'm excited about it. So I did acquire this, but you know, right now it's in stash, so <laughs> it still counts. Alrighty, on to the next one. And I guess I didn't say this before. I have, I think I have a sweater pattern, a top pattern, a tank top, socks, an accessory like one of everything in here just because it's fun to look at and you know probably will not realistically get all these done at all at all i think in my fall inspirations i think i called it fall planning video but like i don't think i knit any of those patterns but i still aspire to knit them so you know keep that in mind but this one i think i will definitely definitely cast on next so i'm excited okay now the next yarn i have in stash is this pretty yarn from the plucky knitter it is this I thought it was sage green in the picture, but it's more of a blue and I really like it, like a coastal blue, maybe a tint of sage. It kind of, it's on the edge, but it's from the Plucky Knitter and it is Primo Fingering, 440 yards, it's 75% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 5% nylon. I've never had a cashmere, maybe I've had one with remnants of like recycled cashmere, but never cashmere yarn not this much cashmere that's for sure and it just feels so nice and i have three of these skeins i got these in the d stash and so i've been really wondering what to do with this um because i it feels special it feels like a very special yarn and i'm thinking because it's fingering weight i'm thinking i'm gonna do the cumulus tea by petite knit it just looks very very basic and i think it would be good yeah just a good basic to have my wardrobe and i would like to try to knit it with long sleeves though i know there's a cumulus blouse but i think that one is dk and i don't think i have enough to double this to make it dk so i think i'm gonna do the t and then just see how far i can get <laughs> maybe do the same thing knit or the opposite on it the yoke the body and then the sleeves i don't know what i'll do but i'm thinking that's that and if y'all have any other fingering weight i know i've asked this before so yeah, maybe I'm settled on the Cumulus T. Um, but yeah, I really love this yarn. And I have three, so should be plenty, at least for a team, possibly three quarter length or bracelet leaf sleeves. Bracelet leaf? Bracelet length. Bracelet? I'm having a brain spasm here. <laughs> bracelet length sleeves, yes. So that is the other stash yarn I have that I'm excited for some spring knitting because I've been pondering about that one for a while. Okay, this one I have a couple of ideas about. I have been so into yellow, the daffodils are out. No, daffodils, dandelions, both, I guess. Both are out, but dandelions, I'm obsessed with those. I really want to um, die with them one day, but different topic. I have this Bar Barocco mantra or mantra it's a DK weight yarn. It's in this really pretty yellow. And it is, how much do I have? Good question, Carson. It's 50 grams and it's 182 yards. And I have 
three of these. So it's just, I'm obsessed with this color. Oh, the sun went away. <laughs> Maybe it'll come back to join us. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> uh, so yes, I have three of these and I just love this color. I really, really lean towards yellow in the spring. I love yellow, but especially in the spring, I guess summer too. But I think it's because the dandelions are out and I just, I love them. I love them so much. So I'm thinking for this top, I was pretty set on the June top by Bettine Dent. I already have that in my library. So that's what I was thinking about. But then I came upon, I rediscovered, cause I discovered this pattern a while ago and it's been in my favorites forever on Ravelry. And then I re-saw it today <laughs> and I was like, I think I might need that. It's the, oh, let me see. I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> The Easy Teasy by Allison Cribs. And it's this really pretty um, t-shirt, very breezy, with eyelets. I have a thing with eyelets, I'm discovering. But it's like an eyelet lace pattern and it kind of looks like flowers. And it just, it looks so nice. It looks so nice, so I think I need it. And I think it would be really, really pretty in this yellow color. So, and did I say this is silk? <laughs> I don't think I said that. Well, my brain's all over the place. It's 100% silk and I've never knitted with silk before. So this will be interesting. It feels like it'll have a whole lot of drape and that's exactly what I want for that. So I'm thinking I might swap and do the easy teasy instead of the June top because I can always knit a tank top in the summer. You know, I could honestly knit any of these in the spring or summer, <laughs> but yeah, I'm really loving the eyelet flowery details in this one. It just looks so nice. It looks like it has a maybe eye cord bind off for, or maybe it's a rolled hem at the bottom of the body. So it's like very, very breezy. I might have to cast that one on next after the eyelet. I need to get working on all my whips so I can get these done. I feel like I always, I always start seasonal projects at the beginning of season and then I always finish them after the season's over so I have to wear them next season so maybe <laughs> maybe I can start soon on these because I am excited about them okay so next I have some socks I have been eyeing these socks since I saw someone who was testing them post them they are called the grandma's quilt socks by Ashley R. Adams and it looks like your grandma's quilt <laughs> because all of our grandmas probably quilt. That's not true. I don't think any of my grandmas quilt, but I definitely have some great grandmas who used to quilt. And it just, it looks like, it looks like your grandma's quilt. That's all I can say. They're so pretty, so timeless, so nice. I love the color work pattern on them. And I think I can make them, I think these could be any season socks, but you know, you could definitely play with some colors to make them more springy. So. This one I'm not entirely sure about, so I just grabbed a whole lot of sock yarn that I had. I do love this color. This kind of reminds me of spring and fall. It's, I do not remember where I got this from. It's just in my sock stash. It's sock yarn though, you know, probably 25% superwash merino. Oops, I have hair everywhere. Postpartum hair loss, am I right? <laughs> Hair's everywhere. Anyways, um, sock yarn, probably 75% sprawl merino, 25% nylon or something of that sort. Definitely has nylon in it. So I was thinking this, and I also have a bunch of these mini skeins from Knit Picks that I got. They look slightly different, like maybe even a bit thicker. It is fingering weight. It is um, a sock yarn. So I have this blue one and this yellow one. I have a whole bunch of different colors, but I do like these two colors, maybe for accent colors. I don't know about doing it with this though, maybe. Like this is the base and then these are the accent because it is a three, I'm pretty sure it only uses three colors, like a base color and then color one, color two. Or I'll show you all the, <laughs> all the colors I picked. I think this could potentially be a cool base, like a red base, or maybe that's an accent color. I kind of wish I had some yellow yarn as a base, but maybe this is a cool accent color and this is an accent color, so they're a bit different. I don't know if I love that with the orange, but I also, this is for a different project, but it's sock yarn. So I think I could use the leftovers for either a base or, I mean, I do like that. 
I just feel like they're kind of similar. I don't know, if y'all have any suggestions, let me know. I always have a hard time picking out multiple colors. I overthink it. Maybe I should like draw out the sock and then like really, really plan <laughs> and color in different colors to see what I'm liking. But I definitely want to use Stash Arm. Also I have this skein, this mini skein. It's like this pale pink with purple speckles. I think it'd be a cool accent color. Maybe for this one. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of different options. I could even do this as accent color for this. I don't know, but I really love yellow. <laughs> and I, I honestly kind of like, oops, these colors. If we're gonna go super spring, maybe this is the winner. <gasps> oh, I like this. <laughs> but I'm using this for a different project unless I decide to use it for a sock. And my plan was to have leftovers for an accent color. But I don't know, y'all. I might have to change my mind on the fly. <laughs> so anyways, I'm thinking about doing the grandma's quilt socks in one of these colorways in my, you know, sock uh, collection. I do have some scraps. I don't know. We'll have to see. But that's kind of on my mind as the sock. And, you know, I was trying to do a sock for every month. And I think I could still make it happen to where I knit 12 socks this year, one for each month. But I think, you know, I haven't finished one yet for January, February, or March. And it's almost April. <laughs> but I think these would be my April socks. I'm just gonna have to finish them all like at the end of the year or something. <laughs> but I think it could be cool to have a sock for every month. So anyways, those might be my April socks. Yeah, and so final, final spring um, inspiration project. I have this skein, I already showed this, but it is sock yarn, it is from the Eclectic Sook. She gave me this um, as like a little collaboration to uh, kind of like promote her new dyeing um, adventure. She has dyed scarves for quite some time and now she's venturing into yarn dyeing, which she's been doing it for a while now, I guess, a few months, because um, she gave me this a while ago. I think we're at before I had Wilder, so that's why I haven't used it yet. But it's so pretty and she naturally dyed it. I talked about it quite a bit on the podcast that I showed it in after she gifted it to me. But I think I finally found a good project because this also feels like a special skein. And I have a few special skeins in my stash that I'm like, they're so special. I don't want to use them. I just kind of want to stare at them, but I need to use them because that's what they're for. Yarn is to make stuff with, not to stare at. I mean, you can, but... So if I don't do the socks, cause I could do the socks in this. It is sock yarn. I believe I said that. I'm sorry, my mind is splattered in all different directions today. <laughs> Honestly, every day, but let's just, let's get the label out and read it. It's 75 super, super wash, merino wool, 25% nylon, 100 grams, 439 yards. That's a lot of yards. And it's naturally dyed with the Brazil wood, which is so, so cool. So yeah, it's this really pretty peachy, buttery pink almost. I don't know if you could describe pink as buttery, but it looks buttery. <laughs> I'm not even sure what I mean by that, but it's just so nice. So yeah, I'm thinking for this one, potentially another option is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's called the Rose Petal Bandana by Dagmar Tamara. So sorry, so sorry, definitely said that wrong. But it's this free bandana pattern that kind of looks like petals. <laughs> it looks like petals, it's a lacy bandana. It is fingering weight, so this is fingering weight. And it's, I just think it'll be really pretty. Y'all know I love bandanas for my hair because I have crazy, crazy hair and I need to keep it back. My child has been grabbing my hair these days. That's why it's in braids all the time now. <laughs> Because if I wear it down or if it's anywhere near him, he'll just yank that hair and it hurts. <laughs> he doesn't do it to be mean. It's just like a, you know, a reflex. But especially if he gets mad or if he's crying, he'll just reach up and yank my hair. I mean, there's so much of it. It's easy for him to grab and wow. I, wow. <laughs> so I like to use bandanas to keep my hair out of my face. I might um, like roll it up and tie it or I would throw it on like a literal bandana if I wear my hair down, that's honestly the only way I, hear my, I wear my hair down these days is with a bandana in it, because it just pushes it back out of my face at the same time. So yeah, I'm thinking possibly 
the rose petal bandana because y'all know I love some lace and I always have to have lace on my needles these days. Um, I'm finishing up the corn cardigan, which is all over lace. I think I'm gonna really miss doing that once it's off my needles. So this would be probably a quicker project, um, like a little accessory and it just looks so nice. It looks so nice and it's free. So if uh, y'all are interested, <laughs> go to Ravelry. I'll put the description, like I said, links below so you can knit it too. And yeah, I always like to have a little scarf on the needles or like a little accessory other than socks. I have a scarf on my needles right now uh, that I haven't worked on in a bit because I have a million garments <laughs> as well on the or whips, but I like to have it because it's just... It's fun. It's kind of mindless if you get the pattern down, the lace pattern, or, you know, whatever you're doing. So, yeah, that... Those are my plans. <laughs> I know this is kind of quick, but I like to be realistic. You know, last time I listed out a ton of patterns, and I did not knit a single one, I don't think. A single one, which is hilarious. And at least with this, I thought about it more. I thought, you know what? We're not doing a million. We're not going to be able to knit a million sweaters, a million tops. I mean, spring is like a few months. I don't even know how long it lasts <laughs> this season. And then it'll be summer. It'll be like tank top weather and probably knitting sweaters for winter because it's too hot to wear, you know, wool tank tops here. Even cotton tank tops. It's just really hot. So and that's it. I definitely want to knit me some summer stuff, you know, still. But I'm keeping it realistic this year. And those are my plans. And they might change. But you know what? I put yarn to the plans, so maybe it's more concrete. But even if they do change, that's okay too. So you might see these in future podcasts. You might not. <laughs> they might just go disappear into the abyss uh, after I speak about them. But uh, I'm still having a really fun time, like looking at my stash and planning stuff out. That was really fun because I don't know if I said this, but I'm on a budget. Your girl's on a yarn budget. We just had a child. <laughs> I cannot buy a ton of yarn right now, which is fine. I don't need to. I have a fairly large stash. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> well, I do. I buy yarn. That's how it happens. But So I need to work from stash. And I want to work from my stash because I bought all these skeins for a reason. You know, I love them and I still love them. So I need to stop looking at all the new shiny things and, you know, appreciate what I have and it with what I have. So that was really, really, really fun. To look at my stash and kind of figure out okay i have this have this like what can i make with it so all that to say i hope you enjoyed this rambly rambly video the reason is my kid is asleep and i'm i was worried he was gonna wake up <laughs> so i might have talked a little faster than usual my brain might have went a little crazier than usual but you know that's how it goes that's how it goes so oh and i didn't i did not put anything for wilder here i guess kind of skipped him <laughs> Uh, but I am knitting him a sweater for spring, so that'll be his spring thing. And I think from then on, I'll probably just knit him accessories. Maybe some cute little cotton overalls or something. And probably, like, winter sweaters for a year plus, because he'll be a year old in the winter. Wow. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you next time.